Hello everyone, how is it going? So this is me giving a devlog on my usage of Construct for 30 days. So basically I've used Construct for about 30 days and I just want to give some of the pros and cons about the engine or what I love so much about the engine. Now I use Unity and Construct now, but I've been using Unity for about five years. So I've gone on and off using Unity and I've just recently started using Construct. I bought the Construct engine i brought construct 2 early in 2016 and i actually just left it till 2021 right so that's quite crazy so i got the license for construct 3 and i used it every day for about 30 days and this is what i was able to come up with so uh, in this devlog i'll just uh, talk about some of the pros and cons i have so uh, also I got these art assets from Anismus on itch.io. So please do check out Anismus. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. So I have this character that spawns dust when our character moves around. You can actually hear the background uh, music playing around as well. So I created also these uh, patrolling enemies. You can actually see how they patrol. And I have these hopper enemies that jump after uh, three seconds as well. And they swap animations. So if we actually look at the ants as well, they have a basic default animation the ants also use. So uh, another thing I actually like to look at is I used a tile map system because Construct has a, uh, let me just make this full screen, Construct 3 has a tile map system and I used that tile map system to actually uh, kind of like create the background with trees and all that. So uh, let's go ahead and actually see more stuff. So if I collect these coins, these acorns, you can actually see them floating around with their animations and it actually increases my player points. So you can actually see the heads up display right here. I have one out of 10 acorns. So if I actually jump on the enemy, I destroy the enemy like so. If the enemy touches me, one of my uh, health bars kind of like disappear. So uh, you can actually see I've lost one heart and lost another one if i pick this other heart i can hear the audio and i actually have replaced a heart back so uh, another thing about this platform is when i press the down arrow key i can actually jump through that so i can just jump through this and when i jump i'm actually setting this uh, rule animation when my character is jumping and also rules when the character is falling that's also super awesome so let's get more of this acorn and another thing i like to also point out is the camera system so you can actually see it's a very quick camera system no smooth transition between them now for these floating enemies what i did was to create the animation and set a uh, sign wave behavior on these so uh that's enough of that gameplay i can actually fall down and the scene restarts or i could actually press r for the scene to restart as well so that just brings a brief overview of what i've actually done right here so uh one thing I like about Construct is the, uh, I don't need to write any code. <laughs> and the reason why I jumped, the major reason why I moved from uh, cons uh, Construct to uh, Unity to Construct is that uh, as Unity became much more sophisticated, um, I, I, I couldn't upgrade my system. I haven't upgraded my system to a powerful system with my GPU. So uh, Unity became very slow. It became to a point that if I start Unity, it took me about five to 10 minutes before I could actually start working. And each time I have Visual Studio open, it actually slows that it's actually eating my memory. Like I have a system with an eight gig RAM, but runs on an Intel processor and I have no GPU. So that's my fault, right? So I don't blame Unity, that's my fault. But if you really want to have Unity work very well for you, you need a decent system. And another reason why I switched to Construct 3 was because I strictly I just wanted to stick to 2D. So I, I didn't really need the 3D side of Unity that well. I, I don't really need it. I just want to stick to the 2D section. So I believe if Unity can have its 2D section split out from the 3D section, I think that would be awesome. But that's the real selling point of Unity. It started as a 3D engine and then they introduced 2D tools and you can merge two of them and vice versa, which gives and creates a nice and unique gameplay. So let's do a quick breakdown of what I've done here. So uh, we can actually see right here. And uh, so yeah, some of the yeah, pros I like about Construct as well. So I'll just open up eMain because eMain has most of the event systems. And the reason why I really like Construct 3 is uh, I don't really need to uh, worry much about scripting. I just create events 
and then use those events to create the actions. So for, for, for instance, now this is a system event and I'm basically saying when this loader, this layout is complete, just play this audio, right? This song called the value and basically that's it. That's how I can create the audio. I don't need to import the audio. I don't need to uh, kind of like, you know, assign, uh, create an audio source and then use a C-sharp script, attach that script to a game object. This, uh, this just comes in like that built in default as well. And then when my air layout is uh, ended, I'm going to reset all my global variables. And here we can actually see my health right here. I have a player health, which is set to three. So each time I start that layout, it's going to reset it back so that I don't start with a health of zero because my player is dead and then it keeps looping. So that's one cool thing about uh, Construct. Another thing you can actually look at is the camera right here. So if I go ahead and open up the camera, let me just go ahead and set this to 0 0.04 for the camera scroll and then set this to 0 0.04 as well. And I'm just gonna click done. So what I'm going to do is just save this and play the scene again. So you can actually see that, uh, what you call it, that lerp we have for the camera system. So let me just go ahead and jump over here. If I jump to another scene, another view right here, you actually see that smooth transition between these two views. So if I want it to be really uh, fast, like I mentioned earlier, I'll just go ahead and set this back to one. So I wouldn't have that, uh, that uh, lerp, which uh, linearly interpolates between these two. So uh, it's actually uh, kind of like hard to believe I was able to do this within less than 30 days. Well, I used a lot of YouTube tutorials and one of the best out there is uh, I think send, no, not send text, Xander Wood. Yeah, that's Xander Wood. Very, very nice guy. Thanks very much, Xander Wood. It really helped a lot and it actually made me uh, understand how the logic kind of like works. So if, for instance, if I open up the enemy ant right here, we can actually see when my ant is created, what I want to do is to set this to mirrored and then use a move to behavior. So I've actually seen what behaviors are. Well, behaviors are actions you pre-build functions you add to an object. So right here, if I have my ant animation, let me just go ahead and jump over to my object types. And I think I have enemies here. I'll just open my ant. And we can actually see our ant right here. And then again, bringing the animations is a breeze. Very, very easy. I'll just quickly preview. I just click the preview. We can actually see our ant animation working as well. We can check out the colliders. We have an object and this is the collider on our ant animation. We can actually see each of these colliders. I can even go ahead and just fix this if I want to be forgiven so that the player doesn't die each time he touches, you know, these edges. So basically that's how uh, that can be set up. So for the behaviors, if I click on the uh, object right here and I scroll down, we can actually see I have a move to behavior set on that uh, object, this ant right here. So if I go to edit behaviors, we can actually see we have that move to behavior right here. If we select anything like our blocks, so let's go ahead, I think I have them grouped together. So I click on this plank, we can actually see we have a solid behavior and a jump through behavior as well. And each of these behaviors, there are actually more behaviors. I can add more behaviors and each of these behaviors would actually, uh, you know, kind of create different actions. For instance, the flash, behavior, I use the flashed behavior on my player collider, like so, such that whenever the enemy hits the uh, player, my player actually flashes. So we can actually see that I have a platform and a flash behavior on my player, such that when the enemy hits our player, our player is going to kind of like flash and animate like so. So uh, that's what I've learned from using uh, Construct Tree, very nice uh, engine very, very smooth engine. And hopefully I might make this available on the asset store and just kind of like clean it up so that beginners can easily have access to Construct Tree. And I'll make sure I add a lot of comments. So uh, yeah, just tell me what you feel like. If you feel this is uh, interesting and you want me to like, you know, kind of like work on this and make it available, just let me know. Once again, thank you very much for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next devlog.